as a dog owner, I know that sometimes I can be lulled into this false sense of security with my dog. But it seemed to me that you were quite negligent because you felt relatively secure because he seemed to like the place and like the people. And I'll bet you, you had no idea there was another dog there. No, I didn't. Now, you paid the plaintiff $700 initially, And I would right? have continued. They're the ones that told me, we're not going to talk to you again. You're claiming a rather significant amount of damage, $12,000, and you included in that figure psychological The dog went remedies? through special training where they trained the San Diego County K-9 dogs. For that was $6,000 uh, for the training, which Semper Fi and America's Fund, because since I'm a combat veteran, they fund the half of it. Yes. But now all that training went out of the window because now the dog regressed from the attack because now he's on edge. All right, so we can open it up. Yes, Mr. Beniquez, your wife, I believe, is the one that mostly communicated with the defendant about the bills, correct? You want to step up, ma'am? What is your name? Megan. Megan, you communicated with the defendant for the most part when it came to the bills. In the beginning, yeah. Okay. What I don't understand is Duke needed surgery, and then the injuries got infected, and he needed to go in for a second surgery. Because uh, he had a total of three. I'm trying to understand what the third one was for. Yes, so in the beginning with the bite, they did mini surgery, so he didn't have to go under anesthesia. Okay. So they just did for the cleaning. Uh, they had to clean it up. Then the stitching, but where the wound is at, like you see in the pictures, is like almost in the joint. Okay. So we had to keep him completely still for him to not uh, break his stitches, which it was almost impossible. Okay, so they needed to sedate him. That was the last surgery that they sed they finally sedated him. So during the process, they told us that it's common that the dogs get bacteria in the, in the wound, and he had like three different bacteria, and they start eating his skin out. And so Ms. Schilling, I want you to look at the photos. I did look at him because... You looked at all of the photos. He has a compromised immune system, the dog already. No, so no, no, I want you to look at the photos of, of the injuries. I saw, I saw them. You saw every single one of them. Yes. You, you saw Duke in a cone. You saw his bandaged leg. I did. I saw it. And it was healing very good. And then I was told that he chewed him up and they had to go back and have him redone again. You, you were told by who? Well, by the paperwork and her GoFundMe page. I, I just refuse to believe that you could look at these photos and still give me excuses. I'm not giving you any You, you are. I, you're not feeling a thing. It's hard to look at these photos. It's what and th the only thing you keep coming back with was, well, I heard he had a, an immune problem or he, he was chewing on his stitches or look at the photos. Look at what he was going through. There's a concept in the law called an eggshell plaintiff, mm -hmm. which means that if you happen to be driving your car and you have a fender bender with someone whose head is literally made out of an eggshell, and this plaintiff with an eggshell head cracks his head open, it's your problem that this plaintiff has an eggshell head. You don't get to say, well, sir, you have an eggshell head, or well, dog, Duke, you have an underlying immune condition that makes you more susceptible to infection. That's your problem. That's not what I said, anyway. The point is, what is reasonably foreseeable? Well, he we had have parvo during the bite, so don't you right, think but, they but here's the thing: disclose to me that the dog had parvo and it could the, possibly kill my dog? Did it kill your dog? I mean, Did it kill their dog? I, I oh, think this is proving Judge Tualdo's right, point. Are we good? I think we're good. All right, we're going to excuse the parties while we deliberate in this matter. Thank okay, you. folks, so we have come to a unanimous verdict. Liability has been established in this case. Ms. Schilling, you allowed Bo to roam free. You failed to exercise a reasonable care in restraining and controlling Bo, so you are at fault. We considered, Mr. Beniquez, all of the bills that you've provided, plus the additional costs, like retraining Duke. We've considered the GoFundMe. We've also credited you, Ms. Schilling, for the amount of money that you've paid, and you've still exceeded our court maximum in damages. For that, the verdict is in favor of you, Mr. Beniquez, for the full amount of $5,000. That is a verdict.